Well, let's get this started. So, I'm pretty sure recording with two different camera angles is gonna be very fun to edit for me in a, bit, in a little bit, but this is gonna be a fun experience. So, let's get started. So, today's episode, pretty simple, about camera lenses. Camera lenses have got to be one of the most important aspects, if not the most important aspect of your camera in general. It's gonna, what's gonna make your pictures go from being just something that you took with your GoPro to being something you actually took with a professional camera and makes it look professional. So by definition, camera lenses are pretty simple. They are what captures light, distorts it, and projects it onto your image sensor. Lenses come in all different shapes and sizes. And in this video, we will take a look at what's the best setup for skydiving and what better camera lenses are for skydiving. Lenses are the most important part of a video or a photo setup because they are just glass. It's simple. Cameras evolve over time. You will have cameras getting better, cameras changing along the years, but lenses are always the same. They are just glass. You can't change glass. It's pretty simple. It's just something for the light to pass through. The only thing you can change on glass is how good light passes through it. But even lenses that are uh, very old, like for instance, this 28 millimeter lens here, it's from 1995. This lens is older than me, yet Canon still manufactures this lens and still has it on their website. This just goes to prove that even though time passes, lenses are still the same. So let's take a look at the anatomy of a lens. Pretty simple. Here we have a lens. We are going to have the front element, which is where light comes in. We're going to have the rear element, which is where light leaves and hits the sensor. And we have our, our focus ring, which is used to pull focus. This, these are the three things that are common to all lenses. Some other specialty lenses have little different things that make them better or worse, depending on how you look at it. For instance, something that's very common on newer lenses is a focus ring. This will make the focal length of a lens change, it is giving you a higher or a lower focal length, giving you, if it's a lower focal length, a wider field of view, if it's a shorter focal length, a shorter field of view. Next up, if your lens has an autofocus motor, which most of them do these days, it will have an autofocus switch. This switch will allow you to change from manual focus mode onto autofocus mode. Some cameras don't have the switch because you can internally change the autofocus to manual or to automatic in the camera. Up next we have the aperture ring. Now some older cameras that didn't have any electronics whatsoever had something called an aperture ring which means you can basically change your aperture on the outside of the camera instead of turning a dial on the camera. This is not very common these days because the camera makes the, the, that decision for you about the aperture most of the time or if you are making the decision yourself you can just change it, change it on one of the dials of your camera but it's still something curious to know. Finally something that's very useful, which is optical image stabilization. Some cameras have an optic image stabilizer that basically moves the lenses inside to counteract for the shaking that you apply when you're using it on your hands or on your helmet. Lenses that have optical image stabilization will probably have an on-off switch either on the lens itself or on the camera that you can change in the menu. If you're using a telephoto lens, it will sometimes have two modes of stabilization, one of them to stabilize all axes of movement and the second mode to only stabilize the vertical axis because you will want to be panning when taking pictures of, for instance, a skydiver landing. You will want that on mode two in order to only stabilize the vertical movement and you can pan and take pictures of him landing. Optical stabilization is also, is also good to give you nice and sharp images and get you super smooth video. Now let's take a look at the different types of lenses. We can basically divide lenses into two categories fixed focal length or variable focal length. As I mentioned previously, focal length means how much your lens can zoom in or out. If your lens can zoom in, it's a variable focal length or a zoom lens. If your lens has a fixed focal length, it means you only have one field of view that you can have. The lens is fixed, cannot zoom in, cannot zoom out. That's called a fixed focal length lens or a prime lens, which we call them. The pros of using prime lenses are pretty simple. You have less material, less glass inside of the lens. So the fact that you have much less material means the lens is gonna be cheaper because you have less glass. It's gonna be light, lighter because you have less glass. And it's gonna be much sharper because there's gonna be less glass to distort the lens and introduce blurriness. This of course will depend on how much you invest on the lens because of course a cheap prime lens 
it's not gonna be as sharp as an expensive zoom lens, but generally speaking, prime lenses will be a bit sharper. Also, one of the best benefits of having a prime lens is that usually you can have a wider aperture. Even if you're just buying a simple cheap prime lens, it's, going to, it's usually gonna have a much wider aperture than a zoom lens that's cost, that costs double the price. Something that prime lenses also do very good is focusing. Because you have less elements moving inside, means that the focus motor will have to push less weight, therefore being faster. This is very good for skydiving because we want the best and the fastest focus possible, so prime lenses are better in focusing. Do keep in mind that, as I mentioned in the previous video, if you're using a very wide aperture, you're going to have a shallow depth of field. Therefore, your camera is going to have more trouble focusing. So, if you use a very wide aperture, of course, it's going to be harder to focus. But if you're using the same aperture on a zoom lens and on a prime lens with the same motor, the prime lens is going to focus much faster because less weight to move means it can move faster and accelerate faster. Simple physics. Of course, like all things, prime lenses also have their cons, which are basically versatility or lack thereof. Prime lenses are not very versatile. You're gonna have one focal length. That means if you want to get closer to your subject, you have to move closer and you can't zoom in. If you wanna get further away, you have to walk back, use your legs to take your picture. And if you wanna shoot something that's really far away and you have a lens that's pretty wide, you're not gonna be able to shoot it because it's so further away. And vice versa also applies. If you have a very telephoto lens and you want to shoot something wide, you can't move it. And maybe even going back is not an option. For instance, for skydiving, we don't need to have a variable focal length because we're not going to be changing the focal length and spinning the, focal, the, spinning the zoom ring on your helmet because we can't. So having a prime lens would be better, but of course, we will talk about this a, bit, a little bit later. Now let's take a look at zoom lenses. Well, the pros of zoom lenses are pretty obvious. They're the opposite of the cons of prime lenses, which is versatility. Zoom lens will usually have a pretty nice focal range which means it's gonna give you a lot of versatility. For instance, this is a standard zoom lens, which means it's gonna have not a very wide and not a very telephoto focal range. And I can just zoom in and out and get the image I want. This is very versatile, of course. Now, all this versatility comes at, first of all, a price, which means that if you wanna get a good zoom lens, you're usually gonna to have to pay way more than a good prime lens. And it's gonna come at a weight because you're gonna have more elements inside. And usually the autofocus is not gonna be as fast because you have more elements to move. But of course, this is debatable depending on what kind of um, motor you have on your, on your lens. If you're using a very cheap zoom lens, you're gonna also have reduced sharpness compared to a cheap prime lens. But again, if you're investing on a good lens, you're not gonna run into this problem. Again, unlike with prime lenses, with zoom lenses, your aperture is gonna be much smaller because you have so many moving elements inside. And of course, you're gonna have systems to move those elements, which means the glass has to be much smaller. Therefore, your aperture is gonna be much smaller as well, which means if you want to get fast shutter speeds, sharp images and blurry backgrounds, you're going to need to invest on very expensive lenses. And in most cases, you won't ever be able to reach as wide as some very cheap prime lenses can go. Of course, the severity of these cons will vastly depend on how much you invest on lenses. Another con that some cheaper zoom lenses have is the fact that they have something called variable aperture. This means as you're zooming in, the aperture will get smaller, therefore you'll have less light and your image will be darker. If you're shooting manual, you will have to be constantly adjusting your aperture when you zoom in or out. More expensive cameras will have a constant aperture throughout the focal range of that lens. This is good, but not essential in skydiving because you will not be changing your focal length during free fall, so having a variable aperture is not a big deal. There are also specialty lenses like tilt shift, macro, and anamorphic lenses, but I will not get into those lenses in today's video. I will, however, get into one specialty lens, which is fisheye, which is very common in skydiving. We will talk about it a little bit further down the video. We mentioned focal length, which means how much your lens is zoomed in or zoomed out, but we didn't quite get into it. So what is focal length? Again, we know what focal length is. It's measured in millimeters. Now, the lenses will fall into three categories of focal length, which is wide, standard, and telephoto. So let's start at the widest. If a lens is below 35 millimeters, it's considered a wide angle lens. A lens that goes even wider than 24 millimeters is considered an ultra wide angle lens. Some ultra wide angle lenses distort the image and create an effect called fisheye. These are fisheye lenses. Usually, fisheye lenses are between 15 millimeters and 8 millimeters. And if you're going down to 8 millimeters, you're going to have something called circular fisheye, which means you're going to be able to see all the way up to 180 degrees of field of view. So 
it means you're going to be having a circle around your image. Fisheye lenses are very common in skydiving because they are cheap and they cover a lot of the scene, which is what we, what we want to capture all of our friends jumping and get really close to the action. This is why GoPros are tenant fitted with fisheye lenses, even though personally I don't really like the effect and prefer a rectilinear wide angle lens. Rectilinear wide angle is what you're seeing on the screen right now. This is a 22 millimeter lens and this is a 16 millimeter lens, as you can see a little bit wider. Both of these go into the ultra wide angle parameters because these are the lenses used, I use for skydiving. If a lens is going between 35 and 85 millimeters, it's considered a standard lens. It's standard because it's more or less what your eyes can see. Of course, your eyes can see much wider than 35 and of course much wider than 85, but it's more or less the same real size as your eyes are gonna see when you watch it on the screen. If you go over 85 millimeters, it's considered a telephoto lens. Now between 85 and 135, it's short telephoto. Between 135, and 300 it's medium telephoto and all of everything over 300 is considered super telephoto we won't be won't be getting into these lenses in this video because it's not what we use for skydiving unless you're taking pictures from the ground of someone landing you're not going to be able to use it let's now talk about the effects of focal length if you're taking a picture of a subject maintaining its size on the frame and only changing the focal length the background will appear smaller if you if you're going wider and will appear bigger if you're going for a longer focal length. In the two images you're seeing on the screen, the first lens is occupying the same space in the frame, but the second lens looks smaller and further away in the widest focal length and the background looks much more compressed. Now in the longest focal length, the second lens looks to be bigger and the background looks to be much bigger as well and you can see much less of it. This is a very important aspect to take in consideration when choosing a skydiving lens. Having a wider lens will mean you have more of your scene and you'll be able to see more of the background. An image that's more zoomed in will show less of the background and will show your subject much bigger. You'll have to take pictures of your subject much further away to have him in frame and even being further away, the background's still going to be, appear much larger and you're going to see less of it. If you're jumping in a beautiful city like Evra, where I jump, you want to be able to capture a moment where you have both the tandem and the city on the background to create this nice effect. If you have a very zoomed in image, you're not gonna be able to see this. The wider you go, the more distorted your image will be, as you can see from the examples on the screen right now. But this will only happen if you take pictures really close of your subject, so not really important. Just keep in mind that if you have a very wide lens or you have a fisheye lens and you go super close to your subject, he's gonna look a bit wonky. Let's now talk about one of the last aspects of lens design, which is price. There are four main things that will increase a lens's price, which are build quality, glass quality, technology, and frame size. When it comes to frame size, keep in mind that some lenses are designed for full frame, other lenses are designed for cropped frames. Again, we will talk about this in a different video, but what this basically means is a full frame sensor will need more glass in front of it, therefore being more expensive, while a cropped sensor will need less glass, smaller glass being cheaper. But a lens designed for cropped sensors does not work on full frame sensors. The opposite, however, is possible. You can fit a full frame lens on a cropped sensor. Lens manufacturers will usually have a cheaper standard lens lineup that has plastic key build quality, regular glass, but they will also have a professional lineup. This professional lineup will have a very good, sometimes metal build quality, will have super sharp glass, and most times even weather sealing. These lenses only use the top of the line glass and the top of the line parts in their construction. This includes, but it's not limited to, Canon L glass, which has the red ring, and the Sony G Masters. The technology in a lens also affects its price. A lens that has no technology will be cheap, but it will not have electronic aperture nor autofocus. The more expensive a lens is, the better technology it will have. A very good lens usually has a super fast autofocus motor and even a good stabilizer. The quality of an optical image stabilizer is measured on how many stops of exposure extra you can get when taking a picture. For instance, if your lens has four stops of image stabilization, when hand holding your camera, you can increase your shutter speed by four stops and still get the same sharpness as you would if you didn't increase. For skydiving, a stabilizer is important to get the best sharpest image possible and also to have very smooth video. The most important piece of technology in your camera's lens is going to be the autofocus motor. For skydiving, it's essential to have a fast and reliable autofocus motor. The kit lens that comes with your camera is probably cheap and has a slow, clunky autofocus motor. To get the best, sharpest images possible, you should invest in a lens with a fast autofocus motor. 
This will mean that you'll have most of your images sharp, therefore increasing your likelihood of getting a good picture. Something like Canon's USM lineup, which is ultrasonic motors, are super good and very reliable. Some aspects that also make your lens better are internal focusing, which means as you're focusing, all of the movement happens inside of the lens and nothing comes out. This is especially important because when you're jumping and your lens is focusing, you don't want it to get caught on anything on your helmet or hit something and get damaged. Internal zooming, if you have a zoom lens, is also cool, but not as important because you will not be zooming in or out when you're jumping. Low focus breeding is especially important for video work. Focus breeding is basically how much your lens zooms in or out when it's focusing. It's only gonna be just a little bit, but in some lenses it's very noticeable. And having a very low focus breeding or not even having any focus breeding at all is very good for video work because as the camera is focusing, you're not gonna have that, that distracting focus breeding happening. A good lens is also parafocal, which means as you zoom in and out, it's gonna maintain focus on your subject. This isn't as important in skydiving because you're not going to be zooming in and out when you're jumping. All these aspects I mentioned are important, but not essential. So let's take a look at some important aspects for a skydiving lens. It should be wide in order to capture as much of the scene as possible and el eliminate the risk of having your subject out of frame. It should have a fast aperture to get the best shutter speeds possible, but it's not essential since in skydiving we have very good lighting conditions. It should also be fixed focal length in order to reduce the weight on your head give you faster shutter speeds, and give you a sharper image. This is not an essential key feature, but it's good to have. It's also good to have optical image stabilization, especially for video, but this is not essential. It's very good if it's also internal focusing, to not have any moving parts on the outside of the camera, which is gonna give your lens a longer life because there's less likelihood of it getting damaged. And of course, the key thing is your lens should be cheap. If you break your lens or if you lose your lens, you don't want to be out thousands or hundreds of euros. You just want to get the cheapest lens you can, so that if you break it, which, again, remember, skydiving is an extreme sport, you're not going to be out an arm and a leg. Let's look at some examples of skydiving lenses. Remember, I am a Canon shooter, so these will be Canon lenses. Of course, Nikon, Sony, Fujifilm, Pentax will have their own lens lineups and uh, you can choose from those, but these are Canon examples. The Sigma 10mm f2.8 fisheye for crop sensitive cameras, which is a lens I own. The Canon 20mm f2.8 USM lens, which is also a lens I use and it's the lens you're seeing right now. The Canon 10 to 22mm f3.5 to 4.5 USM which is also very good and all, one of my favorite lenses even though it has a small aperture and only fit crop sensored cameras it still has that USM motor which means you're gonna have super fast focusing and 10 millimeters is really wide and you can even get it to 22 if you want to get a little closer in and you have all of that range in between the Sigma 10 to 20 f3.5 is also a very good lens because it has kind of a wide aperture it's zoom and it's designed for crop sensor cameras but that wide aperture and that zoom ability is going to be what well, I mean you're going to be able to get that super wide 10 millimeter or 60 millimeter on crop sensors and you can still get into that 20 millimeter on crop sensor which is 32 on full frame while being at a fixed aperture of 3.5. Now if you want to go super wide Sigma makes an 8 to 16 millimeter f 4.5 to 5.6 for crop sensor cameras. This is as wide as you can get on crop sensors without going fish high. Sigma also makes a 4.5 millimeter circular fisheye lens for cropped sensors. It's an f2.8, which means it lets in a lot of light, and it's a circular fisheye, which means you're gonna be able to see as much of the image as possible, but the distortion is gonna be pretty big, so I don't really like that lens. Again, we have to keep in mind that most of these lenses are designed for cropped sensor cameras, which means to get their full frame equivalent, you're gonna to have to multiply the focal length by 1.6 if you're a Canon cropped sensor camera or 1.5 if you are on Nikon crop sensor cameras to get the 35mm film equivalent. I also put on most of my lenses a UV filter, especially the lenses I use for skydiving. A UV filter is basically going to put another layer of glass that you can replace in front of your lens. This means if a rock or an insect hits your lens and damages it by scratching or breaking it, it's not going to break the front element of the lens, but instead it's just going to scratch your UV filter and you can simply swap it. UV filters will not have any effect on your image quality, but they will reduce a little bit of ghosting and increase a little bit the contrast of your image. This will not be of course a lot, but a little bit. Whatever you choose to use, make sure you don't invest a lot of money on the lens you're going to be using for skydiving, because if you damage it, you don't want to be out thousands of euros. So don't go out and buy a Canon L lens, like a 14mm f2.8 L, and then when you break it, you're going to be sad. Don't buy a Canon 11-24 f4 L, because if you break it, you're going to be out a lot of money. So 
Again, be smart on your investments and buy a good cheap lens that's good for your work. With that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode about lenses. Next episode will be about different types of cameras and different types of sensors. If you have any questions or complimentary information you would like to add, you can do so freely in the comment section down below. And as always, have a good day.